Good morning and welcome to the Crafty Canary for your tip on Tuesday. Today we're continuing our series on refurbishing elastic that has gone to pot, <laughs> as they say. And I have another pair of pajama pants, but these are made just a little bit differently than the last pair that I did last week. Last week our uh, elastic had a casing so we could remove it and um, actually put some more back into the casing. This week it is all stitched in at one time. So the manufacturer uses a serger type machine that sews the serge stitch on the edge of this, we'll call it a casing, although it's not really a casing, and then sews through the elastic and sews it down all at the same time. So of course they have those type of machines, but as home seamstresses, home sewers, we usually don't. So what we're gonna have to do is kind of do a little bit of a, um, of a trick here. And again, if I was doing this for a customer, I would probably get my seam ripper out and take all of those little stitches out, put a new piece of elastic in, and uh, surge it on and then sew it down because I don't have a machine like that. Those are really just in factories. And so um, I would have to kind of figure out my own way to make it look like it did from the factory. Um, but since it's for my own use, I'm gonna do a little bit of a trick. So I'm gonna have some elastic showing on the inside of my waistband, but that's okay, it's just for me. And again, these are pajamas that I love that I don't wanna get rid of yet, and I'm just saving myself a little bit of money and getting a little bit more wear out of some garment that I had. So what we're gonna do this time is just sew the elastic on directly to the inside. And uh, if you remember my video about putting the elastic on the bottom of your fitted sheet, it's very similar to that idea. But we are gonna have to know how much elastic we need for our waistband. Because if we sew it on and then try it on and it's not the right size, we're gonna have to take all of those stitches out and do it all over again. So we wanna be as exact as we can in getting our elastic. We can't just put it on and stretch and hope. With home goods, it, the fit is a little less precise than in garments. With garments, you really have to get the fit right or it will fall down or be too tight. So we wanna make sure that we have the elastic. Now, the way I'm gonna sew this is from the wrong side. So I'm gonna be sewing the elastic on the inside of the waistband. So on the top thread, I'm gonna have white so that it will match this. On the bottom, since I don't want white thread to go on the outside of my pajamas, even though it's pajamas and no one but my family is gonna see it, I still want it to look pretty nice. So I'm gonna use a gray bobbin that matches the outside of my pajamas. So I'm gonna use that in my bobbin. So let me go ahead and load my bobbin here before we get started. Um, I should put my glasses on because again, I cannot see if I don't have them. So we're gonna put the bobbin in and pull it up to the top. Make sure we've got it ready to sew. That didn't catch. All right, we're ready to sew. And now let's talk about how we're gonna do this. What I wanna do is put, again, that elastic on here. And again, I'm gonna have to stretch it, but I'm gonna pin it as I do because like I said before, with the sheet, it really was not did not have to be as precise. But when you're dealing with garments, you have to be really precise. So I can't just stretch it and hope that it works out. I really need to pin it and make sure that it's gonna work out. But first, I have to figure out how much elastic I need. So again, I'm using my one inch elastic here and I'm using my giant roll, which you probably don't have, but if you buy a package of elastic or enough elastic for your regular waistband measurement, that should be enough. So your regular waistband measurement without stretching it is gonna be more than you need. So what we're gonna do is, and I have a tank on so I can be uh, modest here, but I'm gonna make sure my pants are down a little below my, where I like to wear my pajama pants and I'm gonna put it around my waist and stretch just a little bit. Sorry if my voice sounds weird, I'm holding my shirt up with my chin. Okay, so I need a little more elastic there. I'm going to tighten so that it's comfortable. So this is the way I would want it to feel if I had my pajamas on. I don't want it to be too loose because then my pajamas are gonna fall down. I don't want it to be too tight because then I'm gonna be like Ugh, all night long and wishing that my pajamas weren't so tight. So let me get back to where that was. About, I'm gonna loosen it just a tad, that's too tight. About right there. Then making sure I have enough to overlap, I'm gonna see how I'm making sure that that's overlapped. I'm gonna cut right here. So here's my 
scissors, cut my piece of elastic, and there we go. And remember, I overlapped it about an inch. Okay, let me get this elastic out of the way. And now, how to pin it on. So I think I want my bulkiness to be in the back. You know, you normally you have a tag in the back, so that kind of uh, feels natural to have a little bit of bulk in the back. So I'm going to start by overlapping that um, back seam by about an inch. And I'm gonna pin it to the entire waistband, elastic and all. And remember, this is, this is if I just were to do it even and not stretch it at all, I would be short. So I'm gonna to have to stretch it just a little bit as I pin. Um, I'm noticing this isn't too much too small or too big, so um, I'm not gonna to have to stretch it too much. Your waistband might be a little bit bigger than that. Make sure too when you're stretching that you're only stretching the elastic and not the waistband because it still has a little bit of stretchiness in it, so it's wanting to stretch um, as I pull. So that's a little bit difficult there. So be sure that you're not stretching your waistband as well as your elastic, your new elastic. All right, let's see how I'm doing. One good way to do this too would have been to, uh, before you stretch it, to see where the midpoint of your elastic was and mark that with a pen or with a marking pencil. And then that would be where, you, your middle point would be where you need to be when you're at the front seam. That's a good way to gauge it so that you know that you're pretty even. I'm just gonna wing it here. It's really hard not to stretch the waistband as you're doing this. Now, I have a tie on the front. It's purely decoration. Um, that's gonna make it difficult when I start to sew, so I'm going to take that off. I'll probably uh, stop the camera here, take that off real quick, and then come back to you. But um, I don't wanna keep that there while I'm sewing because I'll probably end up sewing over it, and not only will it be bulky in my machine, but I'll mess up the look of the tie. Um, and the tie is purely decoration anyway. I kinda don't like it because it comes untied and it drives me nuts, so I may just leave it off. But I will finish pinning this and come back to show you how I end the pinning and take that uh, tie off and be with you in a second. So I've finished pinning the elastic onto the waistband and I've taken off that tie, but let me show you how I did the end of the pinning. I've overlapped that elastic about an inch, as you can kind of see. Now I'm, I've sewn again for a long time, so I can just kind of estimate um, the amount that an inch is. If you feel you know, like you're a little self-conscious or not as confident in your guessing skills as far as a measurement, just get one of these little measures and measure and see, oh, yep, it's about an inch, I did it. If not, just kind of repin it, stretch it a little bit and get it to where it is about an inch if that's how you had it when you measured your elastic. Okay, so now we're gonna sew it on. And what we're gonna do with the sheet, we did a zigzag stitch, but that was only a 3 eighths of an inch elastic. This is a whole inch. So doing a zigzag across that, one would not look good, two would really not be enough coverage. I don't think I have a, a zigzag stitch that will cover a whole inch. So what I'm gonna do is do a straight stitch at the top and a straight stitch at the bottom. And again, remember that I'm using the white thread on the top and I'm using the gray thread on the bobbin so that they will match. So I will put this under the machine and I'm gonna get as, you know, not so close that I'm gonna run off the edge and accidentally miss it, but as close to the edge as I can, probably what ends up being about an eighth of an inch. So really about, you know, maybe halfway um, to the edge of your presser foot. So I'm gonna stitch and then back stitch, secure it, and I'm gonna go all the way around. And if I need to take a pin off out because I, my presser foot is bonking it, is hitting it, then I will. But if not, I'm gonna leave those pins in so that they'll be there for um, the other side too, although I'm gonna be sewing backwards on them. Um, when I get to the place where it is joined, I will have to take that pin off because I did it catty corner and it's sticking over the edge. So let me sew a little bit and show you that. So now I'm to that pin that I joined the two with. So I'm gonna take that out and just go right over both layers of that elastic. It's a little bit thick, and this pin is getting in my way, so I'm gonna take it out. Um, it won't be too bad if I even take out all the pins because I know that 
I've got a stitch there securing it. I just might have to stretch a little more when I'm doing the bottom stitch if I've taken out all the pins. So I will sew this and uh, be right back with you for the other side. So I've sewn that seam at the top of the elastic and you can see there's a new stitch on the outside and I didn't quite get it super even, but again, that's okay. It's just for me. Um, and then there's gonna be another stitch when I stitch the bottom, but it probably will just blend in with all these other stitches that the manufacturer used. So it's looking like this on the inside. You can see that it's gathering up a little bit more than it was. I ended up taking out most of the pins, um, but now I'm gonna sew that bottom and I'm gonna just go the same direction so I won't have the pins going the wrong way like I thought I would. Um, and I'm going to go down again about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little less from the bottom edge of that elastic and sew all the way around. This time, though, I'm going to need to stretch just a little bit more because I've taken those pins out. So let me get past these two pins that I left in. And as I come to the tag, it's wanting to curl up. And if I'm not careful, I might sew that down onto the elastic. So I'm gonna be real careful to hold it down as I go through that. But like I've said in other videos, be really careful of your fingers. I don't want anybody sewing their fingers uh, through as they do these type of things. Okay, now we're to the point where the pins are gone and I can you can see that I'm gonna need to stretch it or it's gonna bunch up underneath my machine. So stretch just a little bit so that it's just the, where you want it. And make sure that when you are pulling that your needle is into the elastic and fabric so that you're not gonna pull it out and get uh, messed up on your seam. Again, just like the sheet, it's a good idea to hold it in the back and stretch a little bit in the back as well. All right, I'm gonna finish this up and then show you how they look. So here's how it looks on the inside now. We've got a row of stitching at the top and at the bottom of the elastic. And here's what the outside looks like. And it does just blend right into those three stitches that were on there before from the manufacturer. So that's how it looks, that's how it works. And now I will show you how they look on. They fit so much better, nice and snug, but not too tight. They won't keep falling down on me like they were before. They were way too big. I think they even started a little bit way too big. It's not as much that the elastic um, got deteriorated. It's just that I bought some that were a little bit too big for me. And so it's nice now to feel comfortable in these pajamas and feel like they're not gonna fall down and I can get a lot more wear out of them that way. So I hope this has helped. I hope you've enjoyed this tip. Please come back next week and we'll have some more ways to refurbish your old elastic and subscribe to my channel and please share with all your friends. Thanks so much. See you next time.